Yesterday, they finally had the uh, press conference for the new guys running the show for the Washington Wizards. And there are a lot of questions about the direction of the team. Do they bring back their mid-three, as we're calling them? <laughs> Porzingis, Kuzma, and Beal. Do they trade Beal? Uh, you have Michael Winger, who's going to join the show at 9. He is the boss. Big boss. Underneath Mike, uh, Michael Winger, they have a general manager. That is Will Dawkins. Mm -hmm. And then they brought in that guy, Schlenk. Mm -hmm. who is a personnel Michael, guy. Michael Schlenk? I think so. I'll have to double check on his first name. It's early in so the morning. So they brought in three new guys. Three new guys. Yeah. Uh, one, Schlenk is essentially like a scout. Right. Yeah. All right, I don't care about the job title. He's like the head scout, the guy that's going to be um, assessing the abilities of the players. Then you've got a general manager. That's the guy that makes the moves. And then you got the boss, who is Winger, who will be on at 9. Here's Will Dawkins, though, on the biggest question that everybody has, which has to do with Bradley Beal. I'm happy to be walking in the door having Brad on the team. You don't find players like that. So for us, the Brad situation isn't a situation. He's under contract. He's our player. We're happy to have him. Um, but in terms of what you're saying, staying in mediocrity is not the goal. And we've been given – direction from the owner and the ownership group that whatever it takes to get to where we want to get to you have the ability to do it how fast that's going to go when we're going to get there like we got to create that plan and honestly we haven't done that yet um, but when we do we'll execute it and i think it's safe to tell the fans that we'll be able to build the team in a way they'll be proud of in a way that we'll be competing for a long time it is travis schlank travis right. is his name hmm I mean, it sounds like, without him actually saying it, it sounds like they're open to certainly trading Bradley Beal. Yes. And they are, if you read some of the quotes, and we're going to play more of it, they are authorized to completely tear it down. Mm -hmm. and they do whatever and they want. build up yeah. from the uh, ground up. That's so fantastic sounds, news. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what you expect so what when, wanted, you, right? when you yeah. bring in a new perspective and some voices from outside of the organization how easy is that going to be well who knows but at least ted has said all right we're done with this you got, we're bringing you guys in right. to rebuild wipe it all out love and it. do what you got to do love That's what it sounds some, like so, some new blood in the building it's not going to be the status quo it may be painful but look the last few years have been painful the last few decades have been painful rooting for this team i do think we all fall in the trap and i definitely fall into this trap too that because of the lack of winning, we downgrade how good a player Bradley Beal is. Mm -hmm. He's still a good player. Yes. And I've said this many times. When you actually look at his numbers, he was a more efficient scorer this year. When you look at the shooting percentage, I want to say it was right around 50%. Um, the scoring was down because mm -hmm. he didn't take as many shots because you've got Porzingis and Kuzma jacking up a bunch of shots as well. So he didn't finished second in the league in scoring, which he did twice. So I understand the perspective that Dawkins is coming in saying, look, we got a really good player. Mm -hmm. Now, they tried to build around that really good player, and part of his problem is availability. He misses so many games, it's almost hard to tell what they could be with Bradley Beal. But if you're not able to move him, and if every trade is garbage or he just turns down every trade, you still have a good player at the two guard mm -hmm. position, a guy who can be an all star. You got a good player. He's not a hack. He's a good player, but is he worth fifty five million dollars? No, but you, I mean, especially when he's got the injury history. You kind of have years. to take that out. That's like a sunken cost now. There's nothing they can do about the fact McKin that he's making the max money. Like, right. It's yeah. just, yeah. I mean, if he was making twenty five million dollars, you'd right. say, oh, he's a bargain. We're, we're not trading him. Right. But the fact that he's making in the fifties, you know, that kind of. <laughs> that handcuffs what you want to do with the other the rest of the roster, and I would think that. Um, you know, if he was a guy who was playing every game and maybe his numbers were a little bit better, you'd say, well, we're not trading him, but they're going to have to. So Ted answered a few questions and was very frank and honest. We haven't heard from Ted as much mm. over the years. Yeah, I want to hear this. Um, and it's really all about the rebuild. Like we have Ted talking about the rebuild, Michael Winger talking about the re rebuild. Here's Ted talking about whether he's actually given authority to his guys. How do we know that this group, if they want to do something, is empowered to? This, the idea is if they would like to trade Beal or they'd like to reset, that they wouldn't be allowed to. What is your comment on that? Okay, well, just look at my 
track record as an owner. I mean, what did we do with the Caps? We traded all of our players and went young and did the Rock right thing. the Red things. Era started. What did we do with the Wizards when I first came here? We traded three all-star players, got the first-round pick in the draft, then rebuilt. You know, we've made the playoffs five of the last ten years. Injuries has played, you know, pretty serious role in there, but I'm not afraid of a rebuild. You know, at the same time, what I told them is um, – it's a blank canvas for you. This is our organization. These are our players. These are the contracts. Come on in, assess, review, come to me with the plan, and you're accountable. You're responsible, and I'm um, up for whatever you tell me. This is what's going to get us to that right place, and they're totally empowered and that's what's excited them. So it's weird. They, they're they totally empowered, but they still have to come up with a plan and run it by him before they right. do it. Mm-hmm. And he's also saying, I don't, if this gets messed up, it's on you guys. Uh, I don't You're think, full on accountable I don't here. Think, I don't think it has to be run by them. He's just, they're presenting the plan to him. He's supposed it's, to be in the loop. Yeah, he wants, he wants to know what, what's going and on. He should certainly be in the loop. I don't think, I don't think. He should be in the loop. After hearing all of the pressers and, and, and Ted talking on Grant and Danny mm-hmm. and everybody talking, um, it sounds like Ted is taking a hands-off approach. They finally have somebody who's outside of the organization yeah. stepping in with fresh eyeballs mm-hmm. and fresh ideas. And and he's letting them do whatever they need to do to be successful. Mm-hmm. Ted Ted had his shot, I guess, do, trying to do what do it his way, and he's finally recognizing that his way and whatever he was doing beforehand isn't working. That's that's the impression that I got. Yesterday. Let's play the other Ted clip because I think there's an admission there. Now there was a slight flex there. We've made the playoffs five of the last ten years. It was well, a mediocre play. I would uh, also flex. say, like, that, every, that's not impressive. Like, any half decent team makes the NBA playoffs. It's like right. it's pretty half easy. The league. It's pretty no, easy to two make thirds of the league. Yeah, more yeah. more yeah. teams make it than they don't. The bar is pretty yeah. low to make the playoffs. Now with the play in, and, and yeah. then you're you're bragging about making it fifty percent of the time. So that means half the time you were in the bottom third of the league. Yeah, it's changed the last it's couple years flex. with the play in game, but currently the system is. 30 teams in the NBA, 20, 20. make the playoffs. Right. right. Correct. Yeah, it's not a great flex. So you me. have to be Ask in the top the 10 out How of many 15. times have you won your first-round matchup? I don't even know. What, twice? I don't even know. Uh, I know like they that. haven't made it past the second round. Here's uh, Ted talking about where he stands with the Wizards and the other teams that he owns and his success rate. And to be sincere, what's frustrated me is you know, from – the day we bought the Capitals, we have one of the best records in the league. And and so I look at the Mystics. We have an identity. We've got leaders. We have the winningest coach um, who's now the president and GM. His son is now the coach. We have MVP players. We went to a finals. We won a championship. You know, we bought Arena Football League teams. We won a championship. We... We have esports teams. There's 20 teams in the league where we won two championships, and then we went to the. We we know what we're doing. It's a I great see where building. you're going with this, though. You haven't mentioned the Wizards, and your point is they're the one that hasn't gotten to that level. Why is that? Uh, if I knew, <laughs> it would have been fixed, right? So, <laughs> so what I had to do is what we did. We we said we have to go outside the organization. We have to be interruptive to what we've been doing. And I'll credit him for that because he's gone from Ernie yeah. to Tommy Shepard and was completely well, inside the organization. Whether this works or not remains to be seen. The Arena League flex, I got a problem with that. Didn't he own two out of the four teams in the I league so. or something like that? Baltimore, mm-hmm. the Washington team. And <laughs> I think they had a losing record, but yeah, they somehow yeah. won, won in the playoffs. I mean, I- I'm sorry. The Wizards are just way higher uh, in the pecking order than all those other franchises and entities that he mentioned. Yeah. They're just – they're in the NBA. It's just a higher level. There's more cachet there. You want that team to be the one that's contending for titles and winning championships. But all that being said – I think they're on the right path. I, I agree. I, 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 uh, lo- I love the moves bec- thus far. Yep. On the right path because of who they yeah, brought just in. Bringing in fresh, you yeah. know, experienced people, new eyeballs. 
and you know different approach we'll see where it goes